Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be going through the final Dolmenwood PDFs. The, finally, uh, the final 1.0 versions are out today, and I'm going to go quickly through all 10 documents. There are 10 documents, and there are so many hundreds of pages that to cover. It's, it's not possible to detail everything. But I just wanted to go through and, and you know, kind of use this almost as a celebration of the fact that the Dolmenwood PDFs are finally out. Now, the print books aren't out yet. I don't think the printing process has begun. I'm going to wait to run Dolmenwood until I get the print books. Uh, I'm going to run them for my nephews. I think it's a perfect setting for that. Uh, but I, I thought, you know, I, I'm going to be doing a lot of reading in the meantime to prepare for those books to come. And so here we have them, you know, <laughs> the PDFs and all that. So here's the player's book. Uh, we also have the monster book. We have the campaign book. We have the maps book, which is amazing. And then we have four adventures, Amelda Song, The Fungus That Came to Blackswell, The Ruined Abbey of St. Clude, and Winter's Daughter. And then finally, we have the character sheet and the screen, um, which I'll show at the end because they're, they're, they're just a couple pages. But All right, let's do the player's book really quickly. And again, I say really quickly, I just mean we're going through <laughs> real fast. Uh, this one is should be all done. That's what the um, that's what the the uh, email <laughs> the email said. One of the things I love about the player's book is that it starts with inspirational media. That is such a good idea. Instead of leaving it for the very end, you start with it. And the inspirational media here is excellent, but still, I think it's really really good to start with this rather than to put it at the end, simply because you know. The impressions you're going to get from a work, yeah, you know, it hopefully will will make sense once you read its inspirations. But reading the inspirations can give you the keys that you need to unlock parts of the setting or parts of the adventure or parts of the whatever going in. So I'm glad that this starts with these things. Now, I'm, I've gone through this book in a bit more detail in my um, previous flip through of the three core books which I did, I think, last December, <laughs> which is a while ago. And so things have been updated since then. Most notably, all of the art has been finished. Um, all of the writing has been added in. All of the fiction has been included. All the tables have been completed. And there are some really, really good ones. I love all of the tables that relate to the Fae in terms of trinkets and names, things like that. I love, love, love the Fae. And when they're done right, when they're done like... Mm, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which is one of the inspirations here, when they're done like the Fae from actual old fairy tales, as opposed to the Fae from 5e or from, you know, modern D&D, or even really, I would say, I would say the Fae going back as far as older editions of D&D, where they're kind of just like, I don't know, pixies and fairies and stuff like that, and, and they don't have that real otherworldly, not quite supernatural, because that's the wrong word for it, ultra-natural, uh, maybe kind of kind of characteristic um supernatural yeah i mean i suppose supernatural is a good way of putting it but they're just so other uh and and wild and awesome um the rules that apply to fey don't apply to us and vice versa and it can be just as confusing for them as it can be for us i like that sort of thing you've got great classes great art throughout i mean this book is just a master class i love this artist whoever this one is the one that does the more vivid, almost like you know, watercolors. And I also love this one. Oh my goodness, that's one thing that I think is a huge improvement as the as the development has gone on, is the is the uh, shift in art. I think initially the art was not my favorite. There was sort of, the, or maybe the first few artists who finished their work were good. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm better than anything I could ever do, and, and certainly a very good. But there was just a certain, I don't know, quality about the original art that wasn't my favorite. Some of it was good, some of it wasn't as good. But then as time went on, I think the art that was added in later on as different editions were coming out and as more art was being finished, those artists were my favorite. And so as the book has been developed, more and more of the art has become my, my, you know, my vibe. <laughs> I mean, just pause that for me. I just love that one. That's so delightful. Um, and so I think as the books have gone on, I've gotten more and more excited to, to use them, uh, which is great. Like this, oh, I love that. It reminds me of something out of, you know, the, oh gosh, I don't know, um, Henry Ford Justice or, um, 
gosh, Arthur Rackham, or you know, it's just it's it's a delightful piece. It's a, it's an older it's it's in that older style of art that we just don't see that much anymore. I think the new you know there are new sensibilities in art, <laughs> and uh, like there are in everything, right? I mean, but but there are new sensibilities, and I think I like some of the older sensibilities in these ways, especially for these sorts of for this sort of book. Oh, look at that that creature in that. Oh, that's such a good one. Great piece of art there too. I love this artist as well. Uh, and that one. I mean, just it's just <laughs> over and over. I can't I can't say enough about the art in this book. The Noble Houses of Dolmenwood, the Nine Noble Houses. And keep in mind, this is the player's book. So this is the book you give to your players. It's a hundred or two hundred and one pages. So there's just tons and tons for them to know. There's the backers. I think I'll be in here somewhere. Um, but. Yeah, I'm not going to look for myself. <laughs> uh, who created what? Yeah, Ula Final. I think that's the artist, one of the artists that I like in particular. I, th I think that's how you say her name, uh, Ula. Great, great, uh, yeah, art. Um, and that's it for this one. You get a couple maps, I think, at the very end. The Lumen Wood of the Duchy of Brackenwald. This is the player's map. And then you get some extra tables for the players in the back. Which is great, common fungi and beers, <laughs> so they can go into a bar and actually order a beer. Or sorry, herbs, not beers. I don't know why I read that. Wow. I, I blame the fact that I haven't had coffee this morning. That's got to be what it is. I can't believe I just read that as beers. It's herbs. <laughs> Adventuring gear, weapons, armor, normal costs of things. That's great. I do wish they had a table of beers for the players, though. I mean, I know that Dolmenwood has a whole thing about beer in one of the cities. They should totally put that in here. That way players can look at it and say, hey, I want this beer. Uh, that would be great. Oh man, I'm gonna give my players common beers. I'm gonna give them my handout of it. So this is the player's book. 201 pages. I know it's a very rapid flip through. If you want a more detailed, slow flip through, I recommend you go back to the December one because most of those books are the same. Um, and if I go through every 10 books uh, with very, very careful care, um, or every 10, ten, all 10 files, I think we're gonna be here for two hours, which I've done two hour videos before, but I'd rather not make this one a two hour video. So this is the player's book, finally done. I'm so excited about it. The monster book. Now this one is my favorite, I think, of the three. Really, really cool. You've got the table of contents again. Now, I, yes, everything's hyperlinked. So that's just so good. <laughs> um, this is great. And at the back of the book, they have monster rumors, which is an awesome, awesome addition. And by the way, I love the fiction that's been added in. Um, well, a great piece of art there. It feels like something, again, it's creepy, the little creepy, the, the little red caps, but it feels like something out of an old, you know, fairy tale. Um, love of the eyes in the house. Monster statistics and how they work. The, the system that we're looking at here in Dolmenwood is like a modified old school essentials. I'm really excited to try it to see how it differs in practice from old school essentials because, I mean, evidently, uh, they, the, the designers just felt that they needed a new sort of system for this particular game with a different emphasis on certain things. And I think that some of the emphases have been, you know, more like more overland travel, more diplomacy, perhaps, um, more changes to magic. Uh, and I think that's, uh, those are all good. Oh man, great art as there was when we went through this before. I love the cockatrice here. Oh, that's such a good piece of art for the cockatrice. I love that. Crystalloids, Crookhorns, Deerlings, yeah, the Droon, the Devil Goat. Elves are well drawn. Oh, the Fomorian gets creepy. The Galosher, a Gargoyle. Yeah, so these are very evocative pieces of the Gloam. I always love the Gloam. I think it's really, really creepy. Um, the pieces here are good. They're, they're really evocative. They get you into whatever the creature is. Um, you start to kind of know, <laughs> know how to describe it. The model Womp, that's a good one too. But the art is not for your players. I mean, this is not something you're going to show your players. At least I wouldn't. I think probably what I would do is you know, use this as, a, as an evocative um, inspiration for you to know how to describe what you're describing um, of the shadow. But I think sometimes, sometimes the, the art is, I don't know, sometimes it's silly and that might not be always the tone you're going for with certain monsters. So I think showing some players some of these pieces is probably not the best move. Sometimes it would work, but sometimes not. Um, 
I like the I love the art for the witches there. The witch owl, the wrong uncle, <laughs> the black bile worm, the blood worm, the phlegm worm, the yellow bile worm. That's my favorite. I love the fact that there are worms. The dragons are worms with the Y uh, in the middle there. And that they're each based on the four humors. That's great. The Yicker Will. Adventurers and, you know, basically NPC classes that you can run into. And then adventuring parties and how that works. Everyday mortals and different random NPCs you can have. And different animals, because of course you got to have animals. Killer bees. <laughs> Trotlings. That's creepy. So even the normal animals, quote-unquote, are not necessarily um, normal. But here you have rumors about each of the creatures in this book. That is so good. D4 table of rumors. At least, maybe it's not all of them. But it's at least a lot of them. It might be all of them. It has a lot of them. Certainly not all the animals and stuff like that. But that's really cool. And then how to make your own monsters if you want to make more. With some tables at the back. You have encounter tables and monsters about a level. And, and of course, because this is a particular setting, you have regional encounter tables by region in the in the in the Dolmenwood, which is great. Fantastic book, and I love that cover. I think that cover is so good. Um, now, obviously, you could supplement these with with monsters from any other old school system because it's it's old school. You know, it's certainly it's OSC. I would imagine it's very very compatible with old school essentials, if not almost identical in terms of stat blocks and things. So you have all of the old school essentials monsters as well, and if you know old school essentials, then you know it's super easy to adapt to any other you know, monster manual of, in the old school set. So you could take, you know, um, basically anything and, and run it and add them into Dolmenwood. So yes, these are the extra monsters that are in Dolmenwood, these are the ones, but if you want to run something else in here, you absolutely could, easily. Here's the campaign book. This one is 473 pages. I don't even know how this book is going to look in print form. I cannot wait, but the art is so fantastic. That's one thing. The cover of all of these books, they're going to look so beautiful on my shelf, man. I almost want a second copy so I can write in them and I have one copy just, just set aside to be beautiful and to sit there and be artifacts on my shelf. The table of content, once again, you get uh, obviously all of the things are hyperlinked, all the hex descriptions and all of that. Uh, again, this one is just going to be a very brief um, click through. I love that piece of art. That is so good. The wizard going down into his library or something like that. The secrets of Goldman, uh, Dolmenwood. Welcome, master of Dolman. Now, that's one thing we'll see is that the map books, the map book is really good. It has uh, the map of Dolmenwood, but it has a bunch of different, I might say filters, uh, different um, combinations of information uh, and maps for each particular kind of thing. And so you see just factions and you know uh, terrain and um, uh, just tons of stuff you'll see it's great here's the history of dolmenwood ley lines and standing stones the ring of chell the shrines fairy portals fairy roads uh, and then the fairy lords and you go through and again like just boom 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 so much stuff i love that one such a great piece of art the droon the church and the king or the duke the nobility, all sealing the uh, cold prince. That horrible, horrible piece of art. I mean, wonderful piece of art, horrible depiction. Uh, horrific. That's Atanue, the Nag Lord. So good. And then the art that's been added here in is also very, very good. Um, yeah. Highly, highly approve of these books, man. Can't wait. Uh, I'm not even going to click. Well, should I click through? I'm going to click through a few a little bit more and see if I can see some great art. I love that one. The Witches of Dolmenwood. Some great art here for them. Dancing. Now, it looks like there's occasionally, um, uh, especially for incidental art and for some of these larger pieces, yeah, it looks like there is repetition of some art. So it's not that every single piece is unique to every single page of each of the books. Mo much of it is, it looks like. But incidental art, it looks like here and there a piece has been used multiple times. Yeah, you can see a couple pieces have been used multiple times. Sections of larger pieces are cut out and used as incidentals. Um, so yeah, it certainly does. It's certainly the case that it's not all original to every single page. However, it mostly is. <laughs> and the art is still gorgeous. And so even when it's repeated, you're like, yeah, I don't mind seeing that piece again. That's great. I love this one. 
the settlements picture, and then you see the little guy in with the white eyes climbing up to the dolmens up there, the unicorn out in the field. The, the details of these pieces are so good. Oh, there's a dra oh, uh, maybe those are just, uh, I don't think those are dragons hiding. I thought it was a dragon hiding behind the uh, spire for a minute. I think that's actually just like, you know, stone. Oh, I love, love, love these. It's almost impossible to say how much I like this. It's one of my favorite things that we see out there. Um, and here's the thing, the towns seem so cool that you could run campaigns and campaigns and campaigns in these towns and not actually go out into the Dolmenwood. I mean, granted, I think that would be a mistake because the Dolmenwood's also awesome, but it's like there's tons of stuff to do in these towns. And they're detailed to such a degree with tons of NPCs and quest hooks and adventure hooks and seeds for further adventure and for, you know, conflict. And just, you could just have tons of adventures in each of these towns. I love that one, too. You wouldn't even have to go out into the wood, but of course, if you do, so many good things to run into as you go out. Wonderful, wonderful adventures. And each of these hexes has a detailed breakdown. And of course, you see what's around it on the map. It's so good. And you can click on that spot and get taken to it. Look at that. So you can click on the map and go to the, um, oops, <laughs> no, don't recognize text. And go to the spot on the map that you uh, would like to go to. That is just incredible. So you could run this book from a PDF, running through this, you know, you have this PDF open, you have the, the, the monster one open, maybe some of the maps open, and then players are like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna head to the southeast. And you're like, all right, make your navigation check, and they make it, and they go there, and you just click on that. You don't even have to click down through the book. <laughs> so convenient, so convenient. And there are other uh, high highlightable, or I should say um, hyperlinked texts throughout. So when one, um, when one hex refers to another particular hex in the text, it hyperlinks to it. So you can click that very easily. No, it's just kind of shocking to me how, um, how wonderful this is. How really, really wonderful this is and how much effort has been put into this. I mean, it's been in development for a while, but it's some of the best people in the business as far as I can tell. <laughs> and so I shouldn't be surprised at how wonderful this is and how, how proficient this is and beautiful this is. I shouldn't be surprised, but I still am just because it's that good. It really is. I cannot wait for these books to come so that I can run this. I mean, I could run it now, but I'm in the middle of an online campaign with my other group, and I don't think I'm going to be um, uh, switching in the middle. There are one or two, um, one or two things that I don't think they would like terribly too much about this setting. Um, they do like Fey, but we did a lot of Fey in my West marches, and I think it would be kind of like a repeat. I used some of the ideas from Dolmenwood in that, so they would recognize that, and that's fine, but they'd be like, hmm, I thought we already did this. Um, but my nephews have not, and so if I ran a whole campaign for them, I think they would really enjoy this. Uh, and I think that it's right up their alley in terms of tone. Um, each of them have different interests, but they are, I think they would really like it. One of them would definitely play a Grimalkin. I know that. <laughs> he would definitely play a Grimalkin. Um, he likes cats. He likes playing cat people. Lady Mistrain. Lady Frost Dust Shadow. That's one thing, again, I've mentioned this before, but one of the things I like so much about Dolmenwood as a setting uh, and about the way that they take the Fae here are the names. The names of the Fae are beautiful. They're like weird translations of poetry. Uh, instead of just or, or descriptions, sort of descriptive poetic names of what the of what the Fey is, not just who they are, and uh, and I like that. It fits better than just calling them like some you know long Tolkien esque elf name, which is often what we see if you look at like the Eladrin in five in five E or in Forgotten Realms. You know, I I, I like picking on them um, because it's well. It's part of the tradition at this point, right? Everyone picks on 5e. And there's good reasons for that. <laughs> but um, I just, you know, some people are, are totally fine with the way the Feywild is presented in that setting. 
I, I'm not. I've, I've never had a single drop of interest in the Feywild as it was presented in Forgotten Realms or it was presented in, in the D&D books. Kind of standard. That's just so different than this. The Fey world in this is good, fun, enjoyable, old school, fairy tale. Delightful. Just delightful, in a word. You get tons of magic items, tons of special armor, magic bombs and oils. Balms, by the way, not bombs. Uh, magic crystals, magic garments, magic instruments, magic rings. you got to have magic rings. Magic weapons, potions, rods, staves, and wands. Even if you didn't want to run Dolmenwood, the sheer... I mean, you have 473 pages of information. There's no way you could read through this book and not be inspired and not be like, down to run this particular hex or that particular hex or to steal this character or this idea. There's too many good ideas in this book. In all of these books, it's almost not fair. <laughs> but um, but still, it, it, it's very, very... Uh, um, now, this is also good. All the, the rare herbs, their locations are hyperlinked. So crazy. <laughs> and you get the appendices at the end. Um, with a few, a short starter adventure. The pipes on Druman... Druman sorry, Druman Knoll. I can't speak this morning. Which is a great adventure from what I can tell. I haven't read through it in tons of detail, but it looks really cool. It's short. It's very simple. I mean, that's it. You just have a, a short surface ruin and then a dungeon, and uh, then you're done. You go right through it, but it's a great little one. And then you have rumors, and the way that the rumors are broken down are so good. General rumors, settlement rumors, and monster rumors. Oh, man. Just really good. And rumors broken down by location. So these are the rumors you're going to get in this town. These are the rumors you're going to get in that town. Again, a master class of layout and design. And you get special uncommon spells, which again, you could add in spells from any old school game, but you're going to get, if you get old school essentials plus this, then I think you're pretty fine, pretty much fine. Um, yeah, get the maps at the end there, and then some extra um, tables at the very end, some reference sheets. So that is the campaign book, very quickly. Um, the map book is next. This one's great, absolutely great. Um, a cornucopia of cartographic delights for the edification of the referee. You have maps of Dolmenwood, settlement maps, and then you have the inside covers used as well. Maps of Dolmenwood, and here you get the maps of Dolmenwood. They're so good. Northern Scratch, the Nagwood, the Fever Marsh, the Valley of Wise Beasts, the Mulch Grove, the Table Downs, the All the Wield. The Dwelmferg, Hag's Addle, the High Wald, and the Tithe Lands. And each of them, of course, is divided into the hexes, and so you know very easily, oh, which hex am I going through? Which region should I use? Um, which table should I use? If you're in whichever hex. So the color here, this is the first map. Very, very easy to use. And go to the next one. These are the noble, or the different factions. I guess these are the, no the, the uh, noble factions uh, of Dolmenwood. The Mortal Dominions. Yeah. House Brackenwald, House Gullifer, House Harrowmore, Churchlands, which makes sense, you'd have Churchlands. House Hogwash, House Nodlock, House Malbleed, House Ramius, House Merkin, and the northern border of the Duchy of Brackenwald, which is unclaimed wilderness. Great. And then, of course, you have major NPCs, which is awesome. Where are they to be found? Scattered across this region. This is so good. So good. I mean, it's like, it's, again, it's kind of not fair how amazing this is. Lawful characters are highlighted yellow, chaotic characters in red. That's so good. You get all the lawful characters, all the chaotic characters, all the neutral characters. The elevation map. So good, noting the highland and lowlands of Dolmenwood and surrounds along the flow of natural, uh, the na along with the flow of rivers. So helpful. That's so cool. Man, you just don't see this sort of thing very much. Um, and I love the, the color there. It's very, very clear. Beautiful. Wild fungi and herbs, where they're to be found. That's so good, too. A fungi map. <laughs> there are 73 pages of maps, guys. The different shrines, because, of course, in Dolmenwood, in order for clerics, uh, priests, to get more uh, spare uh, spells, they have to go and find... Um, they have to go and find shrines and pray at them. And so to get certain spells, they have you can only get them by going through and praying at the shrine. And some of the more powerful ones are defended, protected, far away, uh, difficult to unlock. For example, St. Clude can give you the spell Raise Dead, 
But to do that, you have to do the whole dungeon of the Ruined Abbey of St. Clude. Tough dungeon, and you have to solve it in the proper way in order to get that spell. So it's really good, but very difficult to get. Which is great, right? You have, uh, that could be a whole campaign, is to get the Raised Dead spell. And you're trying to find out how to do it, and all of this stuff. Um, Ley Lines and Standing Stones. Very, very good. Uh, what it does within the, the uh, different regions. I think that's really, really cool. So Lamb, for example. The scent is a sensation of being observed by a pitiless malevolence. And the spells are, the well, spell effect is range of arcane spells uh, of divination or detection increased by 50%. If you go to Hode, the saving throw versus arcane spells of illusion and phantasm made it a minus two penalty. Or if you go to In Within Chell, uh, spells, arcane spells of fire, cold, or lightning inflict one additional point of damage uh, per die. And within the ring, frost ban elves are banned. Fairies, not demi-face, suffer spiritual malaise. Uh, su teleport, summoning, negated. Illusion, charm, two and six of failure. Druid magic work functions normally. So good. And you have the wood, wood gods, excuse me. Each wood god is listed with its aliases or aspects. Really cool. Mbala. Hill of Henlon. Fairy Doors, Roads, and Dominions. The Earl of Yellow, the Duke Malfleur, the White Way, Buttercup Lane, the Death Glades, Skipping a Dairy, the Narrow Way. <laughs> That's so good. Sources of Healing. That's also really good. The players are probably going to need to know that at some point. Along with not just, like, who can heal you, but what do they heal. Lady Hareth can remove Curse. The Earl can dispel magic. Pelagora Ambe can remove Curse. The Mawbarg Jam heals hit points. Writhing Mandric prevents lycanthropy. Princess Andromoth Andromothia, Andromothia, Andromothia probably, yeah, dispels magic. That's so good. Services. Noting the location of various useful services through the wood, including lodgings, taverns, sages, stores, and craftspeople. <laughs> that's so good. Man, treasure hordes? Oh, that's a good table to have. That's a good map to have, excuse me. Um, yeah, highlighted yellow are things worth more than 5,000 gold pieces. Hmm, very good. <laughs> Thought of everything, man. Waterways and bridges? That's nice. How to cross all these rivers. And all the different waterways and what they're called. Great. That's one thing that's often neglected in maps is you'll have the rivers and then you'll have like the, the hills are named or maybe the cities are named and then no one names the rivers. Rivers is one of the first things that, gets that get named as far as I can tell. Road travel? How long things take to get? That's so good along the roads. Oh, man. Hex travel. That is good. Travel points to enter and chance of getting lost. So these are particular um, rules for Dolmenwood in terms of how to travel. There's a certain number of travel points that are required to enter particular hexes. It's an interesting system. I'd like to try it out. Hex tiles listing the titles of the 200 hexes described in the Dolmenwood book. So each hex has a name, and you have it here. Then you have settlement maps. And these are just blank settlement maps for the players, probably, I would imagine. You can use them, um, but they are for the players. They can get a sense of what the place looks like. And they like I like that they're all consistent and done in the same style. The same artist did each of the settlement maps, so the players have that consistency. It's so good. Orb Swallow, Prigwort, the Woodcutter's Encampment. So, you know, Prigwort was detailed in... Um, one of the wormskin zines, but it wasn't ever this big. At least I don't, I never pictured it to be this big. So I think they've expanded things for this book. And then the credits towards the back of the book. And then you get the player's map, at least one player's map there with um, kind of a combination terrain map at the very end. Man, this setting is so good. And then you get the four adventures, which I've covered more recently. Now the things that was missing, I think, in the different adventures before was art. Um, and so there's some art that has now been added in from each of these books that wasn't there before. Uh, little maps have been added onto each page that weren't necessarily there before. And that's really good. And you get a sense of all of the locations. Um, the layout has been com completed. The little bits of incidental art have been finished. The maps, again, and, and all the maps have been included. So very, very good there. Uh, the fungus that came to Blackswell. Ooh, that's a great piece of art. Um, these are not hyperlinked, but I think that's okay. Good old detail of the fungus <laughs> and all of the uh, 
details there. Oh, and the art has been added to this one. Ooh, that's gruesome and devastating, and I love it. Really good art. It's like a couple artists worked on each one, and, uh, and so the particular art of each adventure is going to be between a couple styles. I like that, that it's consistent. Um, there's a couple repeat pieces of art for this one, um, just within 60 pages. That's kind of a little, the only, only disappointing thing I've seen so far, but it's detail. Minor, minor detail. Uh, here is the Ruined Abbey of St. Clude. You get some more art for this one. Oh yeah. You get some interesting art here. We've seen some of this before elsewhere. This one is the most, like, gruesome. I have to say, I'm disappointed by that. Um, I was happy with the descriptions of how things had gone um, in the Ruined Abbey, and I liked that it had gone into a more fairy tale mode uh, than it was in Wormskin, and the art here takes it a little bit back to that gruesome side. Not my favorite there. Um, Winter's Daughter, which I think we've seen now a few times. The maps have been updated slightly, it looks like just based on the way that they've been sketched. Um, but I think probably most of the art will be the same, most of the layout will be the same, what we've seen in... Oh, that's a new piece, I think. The Dancing Skeletons, that's really good. Oh, I like that. Okay, so there's some... Oh, that's new. Beautiful, okay. That's new too, okay. I'm <laughs> very happy with this latest version. A couple of new pieces of art that are just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And then finally, we have the character sheet, which is a form-fillable character sheet with great incidental art around it. And then the, the character uh, screen, or the DM screen, the referee screen, which has this four panels of beautiful art and then four interior panels of useful tables. Really good, really, really good. So I am just really excited about all of these. I think this is great. I hope you guys are excited too. Um, I'll probably do another review when the final physical books come out, but that won't be for a few months, I would imagine. Anyway, uh, that's it for this one. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'll see you all in another video.